three, two, one. Ah, okay. Advent of code day six. <laughs> Tuning trouble. The preparations are finally complete. You and the elves leave camp on foot and begin to make your way towards the star fruit grove. Something about a device, communication systems. This is hilarious. However, because he's heard you have significant experience dealing with signal-based systems, all of those links are links to Advent of Code problems from 2016, from 2019, from 2019, from 2019, from 2021. <laughs> That's funny. Surely, <laughs> because you've done Advent of Code for four years, you'll have no problem. The device needs to lock onto the signal of the elves, some random characters, start of packet marker, four characters that are all different. Okay, here's our input. The device will send your subroutine and data stream buffer, your puzzle input. Your subroutine needs to identify the first position where the four most recently received characters were all different. Specifically, it needs to report the number of characters from the beginning of the buffer to the end of the first such four character marker. After the first three characters have been received in this stream, there haven't been enough characters received yet to find the marker. The first time a marker could occur is after the fourth character is received, making the most recent four characters MJ, QJ, because J is repeated, this isn't a marker. The first time a marker appears is after the seventh character arrives. Once it does, the last four characters received are J, P, Q, M, which are all different. In this case, your subroutine should report the value seven because the first start of packet marker is complete after seven characters have been processed. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're gonna do an overlapping iterator of four characters and then all characters need to be unique. We've got a couple more examples. So we've got a couple of tests to write here. How many characters need to be processed before the first start of packet marker is detected? Okay, so we need to identify the first four or the, the location of the first four characters that are unique in a sequence. WBJP, first marker after character five. Okay, so five is the last character. Character six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be this four. That makes sense to me. After character 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are unique characters. So we're getting the index of the last character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we do windows of overlapping characters or groups of characters, then we will need to do plus three to whatever index we're currently looking at. So if we're at n, this would be the equivalent of looking at number four. So it would be index zero, which is plus one because these are one indexed plus three because we want this character. Okay, should we set up a couple tests here? Okay, so I've set up the test here. We've got part one works and I have basically one, two, three, four, five tests inside of it. So we've got assert equals process part one. This return value needs to be seven, five, six, 10, and 11. That should be good enough for us. We shouldn't need to separate these out into different tests, but if one of them in particular is giving us trouble, maybe we split it out. This does of course count as a single test. So we still only have two tests. We have part two works and part one works. So we don't seem to need to parse anything today per se. So I'm gonna get rid of nom for now. And then I'm gonna start at string, even though I'm anticipating this to end up on iterators or slices. And I'm just looking for something called windows or overlapping windows or something, something like that. Cars, contains. So I didn't find it in string. So I'm heading to slice next because we have a string slice as our input. Array windows. Is array windows what we want? I think it could be. We need to make sure they're overlapping. Array windows, this would be zero, one, one, two, two, three. That looks right. So we could do array windows. The other one we have is windows, which we give a size and returns an iterator over all contiguous windows of length size. So I think we can just use windows and skip the Skip the nightly feature because array windows would have been nightly. Chunks also would work. Actually chunks will not work because it's not overlapping. So windows is what we need. So if we do our input dot window, was it window or windows? I already forgot, windows. Four dot numerate because we need to know which index we succeed at. Find because we're looking for a specific thing to happen. And then I don't really know if there's a dot unique or something like that. So if we take this and we do cars on the four character segment and we collect this into a hash set, we need to import hash set, which is from standard collections. And it looks like we might need to bring in the trait for windows. What's wrong with windows? Method not found in string slice. So does this need to be an iterator? Method not count. Why did I think this was going to work? 
So here we are at Windows, created by Windows on Slices. Okay, so I blanked a little bit. I need to go back later and look at why we can't use Windows on string slices. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's a string slice and not a set of cars technically. So we would have to turn it into cars first, but that's something I can look up later because the performance doesn't matter for us. It's advent of code. So input.cars.collect into a vec of cars. We do windows over the vec. We enumerate that to get the index that we're at as well as the slice of cars. It's not a slice anymore. It's a, well, it is a slice now. <laughs> of course it's a slice now. So we build up this um, slice or array. We iterate over it and collect it into a hash set. A hash set is basically a hash map backed set with values that are unit. So if we look at standard collections hash set, there's hash set and a B tree version of the hash set that I forget the name of at the moment, but a hash set implemented as a hash map where the value is unit. So it's basically just a hash map with a more convenient API. And the B tree version of it is called a B tree set. So that would be right here, B tree set. The only difference between a hash set and a B tree set is a B tree set is ordered by default and a hash set isn't. So really my default should be B tree set as long as I don't have a reason to choose hash set because the ordering is nice to have. And it can be very easy to think that when you iterate over something like a hash set that it's gonna come back in the same order every time, but that's not guaranteed but for a B tree set, you get the same order every time. So B tree set is a good default. So we'll set sequence, which is gonna be an option use size slice of cars. We'll unwrap that to get rid of the option. So now we have a use size slice of cars. And if you remember what we talked about originally, we have to do plus one for the one index and then plus three because we're kind of skipping. So our answer is gonna be this to string. And this is gonna be a temporary dropped. I can already feel it. And it is a temporary value dropped while borrowed. This is because we are creating a new VEC here. So that's a super easy fix. We take the cars that we collected into the VEC, which allocated a new VEC for us, and we put that VEC in this variable. So now that data has an owner and it sticks around because otherwise we would just be referencing into that data and it would go away because it gets dropped right there. So if we test now, it looks like all of our tests are passing, which is super nice. And this is always dangerous. Okay, so I was just gonna grab the input and throw it into the input file, but make sure that if you are looking at your input for advent of code, right? And you see this, you see translate this page to English. Do not click translate. Translate will change your input and you won't realize it for the next few hours. Like you just won't notice. So make sure that this page that you get from advent of code is not translated or modified by your browser in any way because if it is, you will have a bad, bad time. So we go cargo run bin part one and it's 1531. And as always, we don't celebrate until we see that gold star. It is, but I haven't CSS modified <laughs> that section of the page yet. So it's going way off the page. One, one gold star closer. Great, it worked. Part two, the communication system is correctly detecting, pa oh, let, let's cover part one first, right before I do that. So we took the easy way out and we didn't, figure out how to iterate over a string slice as a slice for this Windows operator. The problem, of course, is that we need to find the first four unique characters in a string here. This input is our string. So we do input.cars to split it up into individual characters. So we have an iterator of characters. We collect that back into a vec of cars for funsies, basically. We take that vec of cars and we go Windows 4. So we get four items that are overlapping. So we get the index is zero, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, and then two, three, four, five. And then we enumerate over that so that we get the index as well as the group of four. The group of four comes in as a slice of characters. So an array of characters, basically. We get to iterate over that slice and collect it into a B tree set. If that B tree set is the same length as our original slice, that means we have no duplicates. And that's the key for this implementation, right? A B tree set uniques all of our characters for us. We don't have to do anything for it. As long as we put all the characters into this B tree set, they'll all get inserted into this hash map as keys, which uniques them. So as long as we have four keys in this basically empty hash map, then we have four unique characters. Of course, we're always going to find that unless we messed up the input. So I unwrap that. That comes back as the index and the slice. So we could print out the slice here if we needed it. And of course, because the indexes that the 
puzzle is talking about are one indexed. We have to add one because all of our arrays and everything are zero indexed. And then we add three because we want the index at the back of the four characters, not the front of the four characters. So we don't want the index that we're at. We want the index that we're going to at the end of the four. And that gives us our, uh, our index. So our device's communication system is correctly detecting packets, but it still isn't working. It looks like we also need to look for messages. A start of message marker is just like a start of packet marker, except it consists of 14 distinct characters rather than four. Here are the first positions of the start of message markers for all of the above examples. So we have to go for a sequence of 14 unique characters. So I copied and pasted the code here. I'll show you some fun VS code magic. So I select the first one, I command D to select all the other lines and remove that. And then we basically just template this out using multiple cursors. So end of a string, end of a function call, comma, parentheses. So these are strings, end of the function call, semicolon. And then we can go to the front of the line and type assert equal macro process part one. And then we delete the two ending parentheses because we don't need them. And then we, uh, I'm control Ding here to delete, add the string, save, it auto formats. This should now be, you know, the thing. <laughs> so let's copy and paste our code from the first example and put it into process part two. And instead of four, we're gonna make this 14. We're gonna cargo test. We should have passing tests, or rather we should have an ignored test because I forgot to remove the ignore. Then we run cargo test and it fails because I am adding three instead of adding, uh, what, 13 is the number we need to add now. So we're getting the number seven for 65. So line 65 is this one, it's the first one. We're going to not see any output because, did I do something horribly wrong? Am I not even calling these functions correctly? I'm calling process part one. <laughs> That's what I get for batch writing this. It's not even an issue. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna delete that whole section of video because it's totally irrelevant. Uh, but since I'm gonna delete it, know that you can use this <laughs> inspect function. And now that I run this, the test will pass so we won't see the output because you only see the output when it fails. Um, but you can do dash dash no capture, it's dash dash no capture. <laughs> so now, because we did dash dash no capture, we can see all of the output from the debug with the successful tests. And that's what inspect does for us. In any chain of functions, we can take inspect, we get the value that is there. So we get, in this case, after enumerate, we get uh, the index and then the list of characters. And we just get the opportunity to do whatever we want with it. In this case, I'm debugging it. I could also print line it or do whatever else. And it doesn't affect our chain at all. So everything still works. So I can get rid of that. No capture is wonderful. And we have two passing tests. Now that I am testing the right function, which is really important, it turns out, for passing tests. So we cargo run bin part two. 2518 for us. I put that in. We hit submit and we get a gold star. Ta-da. Return the advent calendar and we see more of what, what looks like a Christmas tree. Or maybe is this is water coming in here and there's a forest on the outside. That's kind of cool. So it's kind of like an island. This image is usually related to the storyline. Okay, so if we look at part two, the only thing we needed to change was this windows. And one thing that I realized is basically that the window size is how much we need to add to the sequence. So I'm just going to put this up here, window size, and I'm going to put that there. This is plus window size. I'm going to do that for both of them. I'm going to make sure the tests still pass. And I just think it's nice to have that number because that number is both the window size and the offset. So we get to an index and then we add the window size to that index because we are zero based. Um, the problem is one based and we have a length of window. So that's it for today. The lessons for today are B tree set exists, which is super nice. And to also make sure that you are testing the function that you think you are. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it as all, as usual. Questions in the comments, comments in the comments. Like it if you liked it. And I will see you for the problem tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.